Hey everybody, my name is Eric Conley. I'm a Gary County 4 H Youth Development Agent. And uh, about six weeks ago, Blake had asked me to do a video for uh, insect photography. Um, I am a, an extremely amateur photographer. I enjoy it, uh, but uh, so uh, I thought, you know, I'll, I'll put a video together for, for you all. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna talk a little bit about equipment. Uh, and uh, differences in equipment and then some additional specialized pieces of equipment that you can use either in the field or wherever you might find insects. Um, in Kentucky, as far as insects is concerned, it's a really rich environment. Uh, we have a, a ton of different types of habitat and you are gonna learn about that in your class, uh, but a ton of different types of habitat, which makes it really easy to go out and find insects in a variety of environments. I mean, you could probably just walk around your yard or even in your house and be able to find a, a ton of different insects. So, uh, but if you get out and, and look in the woods or in uh, aquatic areas or uh, you know in fields or wherever it might be, you're gonna find a lot of insects. And so uh, you, you've, you've got plenty of opportunity to practice. So take every opportunity you can to get out and, and practice as much as possible. So I'll get into some of the different pieces of equipment or the things that I use. Uh, so let me get that back down there. So I'll start with, uh, with kind of the most base form, uh, and that would be the cell phone. Uh, the cell phone is uh, one of those pieces of equipment that everybody generally, not everybody, but uh, speaking generally, uh, most people have a, a, a smartphone of some kind. It's an easy piece of equipment to use. It's one that you carry around with you, so it's extremely mobile. And so um, it's a, it's, it's excellent to, to have with you and just, if you happen to see something, then be able to, to capture that photograph fairly easily without having to do much work with it. There are some attachments that you can get with it and I didn't bring any of those with me today. Uh, there's uh, one that's on a blue rubber band and I'll actually put the link uh, in the presentation where you can get that. Uh, with that one, uh, the, the, the biggest misconception about that one is it's some sort of zoom lens. It actually just attaches to the back of your camera on a rubber band like structure and you have to get very close. And so it kind of it limits the, uh, the, the full scope of the insect that you might want to try and get, especially if it's a very large insect. If it's very small, then it's great for that. There's also attachments that you could put on either clips or other things that you can attach at the camera. And so that's, um, uh, that's the, the cell phone can be uh, very easy uh, to use uh, as far as mobility and as far as some of the attachments, they're, they're fairly cheap. So uh, somewhere between 10 and $15 and you can get everything that you need. Even, uh, even you can get a remote control for it. Um, you know, I know people have always made fun of like selfie sticks and things like that, but if there are insects that you're trying not to get too terribly close to, maybe like wasps or whatever, then you can use a selfie stick and that's a specialized piece of equipment to be able to use one of those as well. I would always encourage and with each of the different types of cameras that I'm going to talk about today, cell phone all the way up to either an SLR or a mirrorless camera, I would always encourage you to get a tripod, uh, especially if you're going to be uh, around either slow moving insects, maybe beetles or things like that, or if you're going to be around things that are going to be in one spot and you can uh, set up something and actually uh, use a remote to to photograph with so uh, a tripod is a really good piece of general equipment to have whatever it might be the next piece of uh, photo equipment uh, that you may or may not have is a point-and-shoot camera that looks like this or not looks like this but a point-and-shoot camera this is one that has a, a, a standardized lens that is permanently attached uh, and that you zoom in and out of with um, uh, uh, on the camera. Uh, this one has a place, and I'm sure that you all can see that, with a variety of settings. Um, uh, you can go manual, you can go auto, there's a variety of settings for different uh, types of environments that you might be in or different situations that you might be in. Uh, with insects, they are incredibly difficult to photograph, especially live ones. A lot of the insects that you see in photographs most of the time have been preserved and so they get them out and they set them up in situations. But, um, but if you are shooting live insects, you're gonna, um, you know, 
it, it becomes a lot more difficult. So learning your camera is going to be very important. So uh, you can see all the settings there. Obviously there's zoom. Um, and then of course on the back, there's a, a number of different other manual settings that you can use as well. Okay. So uh, this, these are great. Once again, very mobile. Uh, it does have a place on the bottom of it so that you could attach a, a bracket or you could attach some sort of tripod piece so that you could uh, that you could use it on a tripod. This one primarily, uh, especially in auto, uh, when you set a camera in auto, essentially you're allowing the camera to make all the decisions for you. You wanna have no power over it and that's totally fine other than the ability to push the shutter. Um, so uh, if, you, if you choose to do that, that's totally fine. It's uh, really gonna depend on the light situation, uh, how, how well this camera performs in, uh, in that kind of situation. So uh, point and shoot cameras are great. As far as specialized equipment is concerned, once again, a tripod really. And then uh, the, the most specialized piece of equipment that people rarely use, uh, and this is, goes for everything, is the manual. Make sure that you keep the, a copy of the manual with you, or if you happen to be in a place where you have a cell signal or internet, then the ability to look up and kind of Google uh, or uh, search engine uh, a variety of, of topics and issues or things that may come up about your particular model of, um, of handheld camera, okay? So there's that one. Then uh, the other one that a lot of people don't really consider uh, is the GoPro camera. GoPro cameras, for the most part, take really fantastic um, still images. Uh, so you can set this up. Uh, you can remotely um, you can remotely see insects. Uh, I have a, a variety of different attachments um, that I can that I can set up, and you can use your cell phone as a remote trigger for that. Uh, and then the specialized equipment for GoPros is just limitless. So there's a lot of cool things that you can actually get to help you um, uh, with uh, photography as far as this one is concerned. Uh, it, the, like I said, the camera is great on it. Um, you can take high, high level, uh, both video and uh, still photography, but I think the class that you are going to be focused on, focused on is more uh, still photography. So, um, you know, you can, you can absolutely use a GoPro uh, to get some of those images as well. You just may have to get really close to whatever your subject might be. Okay. And then finally, is the SLR camera um, or uh, you may also be looking at a mirrorless camera as well so I, I you know I don't encourage you know whether it's Nikon or Sony or Canon even though I shoot one in particular I shoot Nikon uh, if you are interested in high quality images and you are interested in um, uh, spending a lot of money uh, then uh, the the SLR camera is one that you could absolutely go with or the mirrorless camera is one that you can go with the one the, uh, as far as specialized equipment is for this one uh, obviously this one be, being an SLR camera or a mirrorless camera you can change out um, the uh, the lenses so that you can uh, put any of the lenses on there that you you think are going to be necessary for the type of photography that you are doing. Uh, so this one is like a macro lens here. If I was going to shoot anything that was going to be uh, very long, and this is where it becomes very difficult to uh, to have an SLR camera is that you may have things like, so this, if I was going to shoot any longer, this is a 300 fixed lens. So if I was going to shoot from a distance, like if I was shooting bees or wasps or things that I felt like were going to sting me, or if I didn't have access to being as close to them as I possibly wanted, or butterflies, things that are extremely timid uh, and would just fly away, uh, I may use something that's a, a little bit longer lens. So it's gonna be, you're gonna be able to get uh, clearer images with an SLR camera, uh, but it's sometimes it's at the sacrifice of carrying around a lot of equipment, it's at the sacrifice of uh, the amount of money that you wanna spend on that type of equipment. So there's a variety of things that you're gonna have to think about. There's other pieces of equipment that you may wanna use. There's external flashes uh, that you may wanna use. There is a trigger release. So like I have a, a, an attached cable release that I can remotely, uh, that I can remotely set off the camera so that it can take the images that I want. 
Uh, I will tell you that in general, this is a tip as far as cameras are concerned. The more that you can get images and take your, um, take your hands off of the camera, so setting it up on a tripod, whatever it might be, the, the better the images are gonna be. Also, the closer you're gonna be able to get to your subject, the better the images are gonna be. When you have to zoom in or zoom out, or, or when you have to zoom in and, and zoom in really far on something, it tests the limits of that particular piece of equipment. So the closer you can get to uh, your subject, the insect, uh, the more you're gonna fill the frame, not only with the insect, with the subject, but also uh, with the habitat that it might be in. So if it's on a flower, if it's in a wetland area, if it's in the woods, if it's on a log, whatever it might be, if it's in your house. So you wanna make sure that you try and fill the frame, which means that you wanna make sure that you get as clear and as close an image as you possibly can. A big portion of this class is gonna be uh, whether you can uh, get detailed images enough to be able to identify specific um, uh, genera of insects or families of insects. And so that may require, you know, venation in wings or that may require uh, hairs that are on particular portions of the body. So make sure that uh, you're trying to get as clear an image as possible with that. Um, so these are just a few of the pieces of equipment that uh, hopefully you either have or that you're going to be looking at. I'm going to give you a couple of uh, helpful tips, uh, talk a little bit about the specifics of lighting and how to get the balance of your camera. And some of the cameras that I mentioned to you earlier do that automatically, but I'll talk about uh, kind of that balance of lighting and then I'll take you all through uh, editing a couple of different pictures. And so what I did is I went out and took three different images, one with the uh, cell phone, one with the point and shoot camera, and then one with the SLR camera, and you'll be able to see the detail uh, and, and how I edit with each of those, those different images. So um, I will, uh, I'll stop there and move on to the next section. Okay, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through uh, editing a few pictures and try and give you some helpful tips about uh, trying to get the best possible images you can. First thing is, is, and you should be able to see my screen right now and should be able to see my face probably in the bottom right hand corner, um, but I use a program called Lightroom. Uh, this is in the, Do the Adobe family. It's also uh, you can get Photoshop with this as well. So I'm going to click on Lightroom and I'm going to open that up. Maybe. Okay. So uh, I have, I've got a few images here. So if you look up here in the top left hand corner, uh, you'll see that uh, there's two that are JPEG uh, images. That is from uh, my uh, cell phone. And then uh, all of the rest of these images that you see in this, this flower is, um, uh, it's uh, Leucanthemum vulgari, which is Oxide Daisy. So, and then if you come down here, the ones that are in the top left-hand corner now, uh, these were actually taken by the um, uh, with the point and shoot camera. So I'm going to take you through editing each one of those and I'll start with uh, the point and shoot camera. So I'll bring that image up. So when you look at that image, the first thing I want to do is I want to kind of zoom in and see what kind of detail I'm getting. So I'm going to zoom in and see, you can see that the image is a little bit blurry anyway, and that's because I had the camera in auto. And so when you put the camera in auto, it's not that you're going to, not going to get the best image. The light was good yesterday, uh, but it was a little bit blur. It was a little bit windy, and so with a little bit of wind, the camera has to make some uh, some extremely quick adjustments as far as the shutter speed is concerned. And so when you increase the shutter speed, uh, that means that you are not allowing as much light into that situation. 
So that means that you have to increase other things, whether that be ISO, whether that be uh, the f-stop, and I'll get into some of those terms uh, in a little bit as well. So I look at the image. I think this is a soldier beetle. Um, so, uh, so I'm going to back out of that. And what I want to do is I'm going to come up to the top right-hand corner. This is what I use to edit. And so I may uh, just kind of increase the highlight of that, try and bring out the exposure to it a little bit. And so you can see that it's really kind of bleached out around that. I'm going to go back in and see. So if I want to kind of highlight things, I can come down to detail and I can sharpen that a little bit. Now when I sharpen that, what's going to happen is, is that uh, what I'm doing is, is I'm essentially increasing the ISO. And if you look out here randomly, you'll see that it looks a little bit like there's been pepper that's actually dumped on the edges of it. That is kind of this graininess that is cr increased by uh, artificial sensitivity to light. And so that's what your ISO is going to do. The lower your ISO, the lower the number can be, and you still maintain a really good clear uh, lighted image then it's the better it's going to be so uh so i want to you know i want to make sure that i keep that that graininess down as much as possible uh so your your iso will generally generally go depending on the type of camera uh so like an slr camera my camera will go to sub 100 iso all the way up to uh, at the best possible ISO that I can use as far as getting a good clear image is somewhere around uh, 8,000, okay? So I'll go anywhere from 100 all the way up to 8,000. Uh, 100, that means that, uh, it's that uh, the ISO is so small that you're not gonna see any of that graininess. And if you have it on a tripod and it's a good clear, uh, uh, um, uh, stationary subject then you should have a really good clear image come out of that uh, if the ISO is really high it's gonna be very grainy but it's still gonna look it's gonna still gonna give the appearance that it's gonna be very sharp uh, if you're looking to uh, do some other artificial things you can come over to effects and there's clarity and you can increase that a little bit you're gonna darken the image some or you can use texture to kind of give it uh, a little bit of texture and you can see some of the, the things on the back side of this soldier beetle here. So this is an image from, like I said, a point and shoot camera. So um, anyway, uh, the next one, and let me go back to the images. I'll go up and I'll click on one from the cell phone, okay? So this is a cell phone image and I'll, scroll, I'll go in on that one. You can see once again, this one's blurry. Uh, I did both, uh, the, all three of these I did handheld. So uh, you can see that this one's blurry. I was dealing with the wind. I was dealing with my own issues as far as being able to keep my hands still. And so the image is still a little bit blurry. With, mo with most insects that you're gonna take a photograph of, it, the, the general outline of it is, is gonna give you the best uh, identifier. So like this one, I know because of the coloration, or I'm going to assume I know that because of the coloration, some other things that this is probably a soldier beetle, uh, the shape of it and everything else. Um, but, uh, you know, there, like I said in the previous video, there's, there's also some specifics. So if you're identifying certain types of flies, or if you're identifying uh, certain types of dragonflies or damselflies or other things, there may be wing venation that you need to be able to see in order to appropriately identify those things. So the best, the clearest image that you can possibly get with any kind of equipment is what's really gonna help you as far as identification is concerned. Uh, if it's really blurry or you can't, it's not, or it's very small, you know, if, if I go out to, uh, if I go back out to this, uh, you know, if I'm taking, if I'm taking a uh, picture and, and I, the, the insect is in this flower here and it's in this kind of condition, you're not going to be able to identify anything. So you want to make sure that you fill the frame up with as clear a subject as you possibly can. So with this one, uh, there's a few things that you can do. Like I said, you can come back over to light, increase the light a little bit, whether that be with highlights or whether that be with just a touch of exposure. 
uh, maybe increase the shadows a little or decrease the shadows a little bit. Um, and then as far as effects, once again, you can come in with clarity. You can come in with texture to see if you can bring out any of the features. On this one, it's going to be a, a, a really difficult uh, because both of these formats are in JPEG, JPEG and you're actually trying to work with each of those things um, and you don't have enough raw data. If you look out here on the edges, you can see how it almost looks like a painting. Once again, this is uh, just the camera in that auto that's trying to do the best that it possibly can to uh, make this a good image, okay? Uh, cell phones are really incredible. They, they do a great job of, of capturing, capturing uh, images and being able to produce those for social media uh, and, you know, smaller images. You never want to get a cell phone photograph uh, that's any larger than either a 4x6 or maybe even a 5x7. That's about as big as you're going to get because of the clarity of the image. You're just not going to get nearly uh, the type of clarity that you would want. So this is uh, that image. This is from a cell phone, okay? So let me get out of this one and I'll show you the SLR one. So this is the SLR Im image and you can already see uh, the clarity around it um, as far as uh, just the flower. So if I zoom in, you can see the, the type of clarity that you're gonna get with an SLR camera. I am by no means encouraging everybody to go out and buy an SLR camera. What I'm saying is, is that your images are going to be a lot clearer depending on the type of equipment uh, that you use. Okay, that I, I, so please, please do not think that I'm saying, hey, everybody go out and spend, you know, six, seven, eight hundred thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars on an SLR camera uh, only to put it in automatic. Uh, if you are interested in photography and you are interested in, in doing these kinds of things, then I would, you know, that may be something that you would want to look into uh, into the future. But as far as mobility is concerned, as far as the expense is concerned, you know, an SLR camera may not be where you'd want to go right now. Uh, and you may, but you may find that you're interested in photography as you go. So if I'm going to try and clean this image up a little bit, uh, I can uh, come back over to light and try and hit, maybe turn up some of the highlights of it a little bit. Uh, and I can come down to effects once again. I can increase the clarity on it, maybe increase the texture on it to try and, try and bring out some of the definition of uh, especially the separate body parts, the three separate body parts and the segments and the legs. Also, the segments in the antenna. That's another identifier that sometimes uh, becomes really key. Okay, so you can see that this image is still a little bit distant. So, if I wanted to, I could come down or I could go over to the right hand side and I could crop this image down. And because it's a raw image, I'm going to be able to maintain a lot of the information in that. Um, I'm going to lose a lot of it, but let's see. So, now this is my image now. Uh, you can see that there's a lot of detail in that, uh, and you can even see some of the, uh, the pollen and things that are on the front jaws of the beetle. So these are just a, a, a few of, uh, as far as editing is concerned, uh, everything you want to make sure that the, the image is, is clear and uh, has plenty of light. Uh, the second thing is, is that you want to make sure that, um, uh, it, it body parts and especially main body parts are as clear as they possibly can be uh, when you're when you're looking at these when you're looking at insects okay and hey, let me stop that
Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to show you all was a couple of things that I, are, I think that are really useful as far as um, photography is concerned. Uh, Popular Photography, which is an incredible magazine, they do, do a great job with um, uh, detailing some of the very specific things that are going to make your photograph stand out. So this is a great article. Uh, you can see um, the web address up there, popphoto.com slash how to 2008, all of that. And you can read that and write that down and make sure that you look up the article because it's really fantastic. It goes through and talks about some of the, the some of the things that you need, some of the less expensive ways to get the best possible photographs that you can. Uh, it has some insect ID websites on there. Uh, once again, I always encourage that you go and check out if you're looking for insect identification, uh, obviously you're going to be in a class where you're going to be learning about insects. So you have professors there um, that are resources and you can of course go to the University of Kentucky uh, entomology website and they do have identification tools that are there as well. So please reach out to those people uh, for those uh, identifications or, or reach out to those resources. But you can see that there's a, um, a ton of ways that you can figure out how to exactly uh, get the best possible pictures. Uh, it talks about their patience being the key. For for insects, really it's going to come down to make sure you go to the places where you're going to find insects, whether that's fields or forests or your house or your yard or a garden or somewhere. Go to places where you're going to find uh, where you're going to find insects. It also talks about that if you do catch insects, uh, and, and I know that uh, you all will learn about like, you know, keeping them alive or those kinds of things and make sure that you're taking live photographs. <clears throat> but you can, uh, you know, you may be able to put them in the refrigerator or the freezer for just a few minutes to kind of slow them down if you want to try and take photographs. But this is a great article, how to focus on tiny moving objects. It talks about f-stop. Uh, it talks about your shutter speed and your ISOs using flashes. So anyway, uh, there's a, a lot of really good information in this article. And so this is a great one if you are interested in, um, uh, in learning a little bit more about specific insect photography things. Okay. The last thing I wanted to show you was uh, was this. Uh, this is the uh, Easy Macro Lens Band. This is one that I talked about with cell phones. If you're trying to get really close-up images of, of, especially if you're looking at small, very small insects, with larger insects, larger beetles, and, uh, and even some of your flies and bees and those kinds of things, uh, praying mantises, you're not going to get the full scope. Uh, with this particular instrument, you have to get really close to whatever the subject is, but this is great to carry with you. It comes with a little card and the rubber band, and it just fits over your camera, but you have to make sure that you get the camera uh, really, really close to the whatever the subject might be. Uh, you can put these in a wallet or a purse or whatever and carry these around, and it fits perfectly on any phone, and it's great to have with you if you're trying to get some easy images of insects while you're out in the field and you don't either want to carry around a big giant camera with you or you just don't have a big giant camera to carry around with you. So uh, this is a this is great to, to keep around with you. So, uh, so that's the uh, kind of the last thing that I wanted to show you all. Um, and so <clears throat> if you all ever have any questions about anything, feel free to reach out. Uh, you can uh, contact me on um, uh, email at eric, e -R -I -C, dot comly, C -O -M -L -E -Y, uh, at uky.edu, or you can reach out to me on the Garrett County 4 H Facebook page or at my own personal Facebook page, which is um, uh, Eric Brandon Comley as well. So, uh, thank you all. I sure do appreciate it, and uh, best of luck to you in the class, and if you need help, uh, I'm always available as a resource. Thank you all very much.